The U.S. Strategic Command has stated that the U.S. nuclear triads and its intercontinental ballistic missile are hurtling toward decline and degradation at full steam. And this year was the most failed year for U.S. hypersonics. The LRHW rocket screwed up all the launches. In Russia, meanwhile, new zircones and avantgardes have gone into service. But first things first. This is one of the last launches of the ancient American Minuteman III intercontinental ballistic missile. It most likely ended in failure. Recently, a special committee of the U.S. House of Representatives, at the behest of the United States Strategic Command, submitted a rather dismal report to the government on the gigantic problems of America's strategic forces. The status of intercontinental ballistic missiles the most important part of the U.S. nuclear triad. Declared in it as a near disaster. This could be perceived as some kind of traditional, give me money, whining, but there is indeed a problem, and it is already noticeable even to outside observers. China and Russia have upgraded their strategic forces at least twice in the past half century and have third and fourth generation missiles in service. And that's if we don't take into account the Sarmak, the likes of which are not even close to any other army in the world. The only missile in service with the US nuclear triad is the Minuteman III, which joined the nuclear forces in the United States in the early 1970s. The most recent one was produced by Boeing back in the scrappy year of 1978. In that era, the rocket was considered the last word in technology and a true breakthrough in the field of intercontinental ballistic missiles. But her unified leadership didn't last long. The Soviets soon developed Topol, and then a whole other line of solid fuel rockets for ground systems and the Navy. The US at this time was only upgrading the Minutemen, claiming that even that was enough to hold an unchallenged technological lead. But maybe they really are so good that they don't need any replacement. By the way, one remembers how Western experts savored the first failures of the Russian mace. Now mace has cured growth diseases, and the Americans have even the old tried and true missiles stopped flying. So here's the thing about replacement. It is written about the current third Minuteman that it is a very different missile compared to those that went on combat duty during the Cold War. But if there is a difference, it is that for the old intercontinental missiles, any test failure was considered an emergency. And nowadays it is not just commonplace, but rather even the norm. Judge for yourself, since 2013, America's only land-based intercontinental ballistic missile has been tested 11 times. More than half of these tests ended in complete failure. Missiles flying toward the range near Kwajalein Atoll in the Pacific Marshall Islands were either derailed and destroyed by detonation or abandoned altogether because the computer system decided they were more likely to fail. The last such emergency occurred as recently as November 2023. The commission set up on the occasion of the incident found that from that moment on, virtually every one of the 400 missiles could be considered faulty. Because the problems are systemic. Simply put, the missiles, which are now at least 45 years old, have simply outlived their age, and any modernization from now on can only be symbolic. As the recently retired former commander of the United States Strategic Forces, Charles Anthony Richard, stated, Quote, we are past the point where it has become impractical and unprofitable to extend the life of the old Minuteman III missiles. And we're at a stage now where it's going to become simply impossible to do that. By the way, the new ground-based intercontinental ballistic missile LGM-35A Sentinel not only exists only in the project, but has already become another black hole where colossal funds of the American military budget are sucked in. And what if the United States has promising projects that can overcome in a short time the clearly emerging lags not only from Russia, but also from China? In 2016, the development of the Intercontinental Missile of the Future began. It was designated LGM-35A Sentinel and it was reported that there was to be a replacement for this super-duper MBR for the obviously dying Minutemen from 2027. An astronomical $256 billion was put into the program. But lately, these colossal cash injections have somehow had little effect on the quality component. The first launch of a prototype launch vehicle for the LGM-35A in 2022 resulted in a resounding failure. The product didn't last 15 seconds in flight. Its explosion led developers to raise the price by 30% at once, which is generally against even American law. Now the replacement of US land-based ICBMs has been pushed back to the early 1930s. In the expert community, there is talk of abandoning this branch of the nuclear triad due to its high costs and questionable effectiveness. But this is quite similar to the classic plot of the fable, the fox and the grapes. If there is no way to catch up with the outgoing train, you just have to declare that this business is silly, unnecessary and, most importantly, unfashionable. 
It was also the most failed year for US hypersonics. The LRHW rocket screwed up all the launches. In Russia, meanwhile, new Zircons and Vanguards were coming online. Earlier this decade, a US strategic command general stated that America had dozens of hypersonic weapons programs that could be implemented on very short notice. Years later, it's safe to say that he was blatantly lying. One of the most surprising outcomes of the past year was the fact that the United States never managed to intervene in the hypersonic race. The Dark Eagle rocket being built under the LRHW program has failed to complete even one full-scale test, against all predictions. All four starts were first postponed and then postponed altogether. This usually indicates that there is some fundamental problem with the product. Representatives of the developer Lockheed Martin say that they will not chase deadlines, making every effort to qualitatively improve the missile. However, they said the same thing three years ago. But this year has arguably been the most failed year for the entire US hypersonic program in the last 20 years. In March, the closest to completion designs for the AGM-183 air launched missile were suddenly scrapped. This was a real blow to those who considered its arming as a virtually settled issue. LRHW remained the last hope. But in April, June, September and October, its launches failed before it could even begin. According to Lockheed Martin, computer modeling showed too serious a probability of launch failure. Over the summer, the United States' worst enemy, Iran, tested its hypersonic missile, presenting a full movie with all the details of these tests. But there was never a decent response. Here's a shot of a computer-animated presentation of the hypersonic project, taken back in 2017. In 2024, the US has tractors, a launcher, a command post, and an entire missile brigade. The only thing missing is the most important working rocket. All in all, there's a mysterious story going on with American hypersonic vehicles. They sort of started flying back in the mid 90s including prototypes of future combat missiles. But at some point that magic ability was lost. And now there is an entire regiment of the 17th Artillery Brigade of the US Army, armed with oversized models of this very dark eagle, which no one has ever seen in action. No give, no take, ghost rocket. How many wonderful computer animations of watch while learning this marvel of technology I can't count. Remember the teasing over the cartoons of the new weapons unveiled by the Russian president? Since then, most of those items, including Zircon, have been on alert or on high alert. Compared to our cartoons, American animated presentations of weapons are made on the principle of expensive rich, and the benefit is exactly zero. The main thing that frustrates US analysts is that the project is being flooded with money as if from a brand spout, but so far it is only getting worse. These are American problems and it is much more important what is happening in this area in our armed forces. Lately not so much has been written about Zircon, which allowed some foreign publications to start the old rant that without foreign components the program has slowed down its development. And once again we see wishful thinking. Because the last months of 23 years have been a breakthrough for Russia. Here is the footage of the test launch of the Zircon rocket from the Admiral Gorshkov regatta. In total, our Navy will receive eight more such ships in the next five years. In late November, the modernization of the second frigate of Project 22350 Admiral Kasadonov, whose launchers are specially designed to launch ultra-fast missiles, was completed. And not only have they modernized, but they've already loaded four newer production Zircons into them. The third ship of the project, the frigate Admiral Golovko, will enter service before the end of this year, and it is the Zircons that will be its main caliber, along with supersonic missiles P-800 Onyx. Recall that before the Russian hypersonic missile went to Syria, 14 full-fledged tests were conducted between 2016 and 2022, including salvo launches from a frigate and surface and underwater launches from nuclear-powered submarines, as well as shore installation tests. All of them have been completed successfully. Western reference books also recognize this fact, pointing out that objective control recorded the range of the missile as over 1,000 km at Mach 9. As early as 2024, the Russian Navy will include at least three frigates and two multi-purpose nuclear-powered Ya-7M submarines armed with Zircon. Here is another carrier rocket UR-100 NUTTH with U-71, Avangard, units going on combat duty. And one more small but nice touch to the development of our, if I may say so, hypersonic triad Zircon Kinzel Avangard. On New Year's Eve, Another missile regiment in the Yasinskoy compound of the Strategic Missile Forces near Orenburg was armed with U-71, Avangard, planning blocks, 
doubling the number of missiles on duty with these weapons, which can pinpoint any target in the Western Hemisphere at a speed of about Mach 27. The same American Dark Eagle, if it ever starts flying, will at best only be able to fly 1,650 kilometers at Mach 7 to 8. But it has to be successfully launched at least once to do so. So, as they say, feel the difference.